A what? <laughs> oh, oh, what, this? Oh, yeah, it's just a hat I got for being an athlete. This is my lightning review of the only DreamWorks movie I can remember since Shrek the Third. Put some boots. The second. I know, another old one, but just bear with me here. Some say it was robbed, okay? Some say it was robbed of the Oscar from Pinocchio. Others say it wasn't. Who's to say? Okay, I need to preface here. The only reason that I even considered watching this movie was because at least five of my friends told me I'd love it. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the whole talking anthropomorphic cat genre, not exactly my favorite. But this movie may have single-handedly saved an entire generation of Jason Derulo memes. And I'm here for that. It took me completely by surprise with a beautiful animation style, this playful combination of 2D line art and 3D textures, giving the movie a new school comic look. And a few other recent films have tried this. You know, I'm talking Chip and Dale, Intergalactic, Spider-Verse movies, although those are kind of in another category itself, but none have done it quite like this. It uses fast, colorful 2D line animation to accentuate these explosive action scenes, like Puss literally becoming a Titan Slayer. Yes, I got that reference. What do you think I am, a, not a weeb? And then seamlessly transitions to a more 3D look in moments of calm, moments of realism moments where Puss has to act like a real non-fairy tale cat. It has this blown out popping color palette that's reminiscent of Speed Racer, which was way ahead of its time by the way, but we're not gonna get into that right now. And I could go on, but on top of all of this trailblazing animation is a storyline that's so deceptively simple, it becomes pretty poetic. No spoilers, I know, but this movie follows this epic heroic format that has been done a bajillion times, but for some reason it's so hard. And like I said, it's simple. Cats have nine lives. Puss is on his last one and death is finally approaching. Then he's scared. And when I explain it like that, it sounds kind of boring, but I promise you it's not. All the characters are newfangled takes on fairy tale classics. I mean, we got Goldilocks, we got Jack Horner, even though I didn't really know who that was until I watched this movie. We got another talking cat. And even though they're all outlaws, all but one find fitting redemption stories that make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And don't even get me started on the wolf. Literal chills. But you see what I'm saying, right? All of this outrageous, unrelenting animation is perfectly juxtaposed with the simplicity of the story that just works so well. Even though this is a sequel, Puss in Boots The Last Wish is a standalone feat that's doing things the first one hasn't done, nor any other DreamWorks movie for that matter. It's a celebration of animated movies that have been evolving for decades, and it's pushing for new conventions and changes to the format, which huge corporations usually never do. <coughs> Disney sucks. <coughs> yeah, I'm doing this thing where instead of coughing while you say the word, you cough before and after. I think that's an allusion to something It's in my brain. I don't fucking I'm definitely gonna have to give this one another watch, but for now, it's up there with some of the best movies I've watched this year. So don't hate me for this. 9 out of 10. And with that, I think I'm gonna go wake up my anthropomorphic cat that's been living in my house without paying rent for months now. So I guess I'll see you guys later.